Hi, uh, today I was going to talk about the wealthiest cities on the planet um, and uh, some of these may surprise you and some of the numbers may be particularly interesting just to see uh, in terms of traveling and just other aspects of what you might be interested in in terms of uh, wealth uh, around the world. Uh, so some of these numbers may be quite debatable, uh, you know, it is 2022 uh, and uh, every year these numbers change. Um, so you can kind of see that uh, overall the wealth has been increasing, but there's quite a big gap uh, between essentially uh, the New York and Tokyo uh, and Los Angeles and the rest of the other major cities around the world. Um, so New York does have quite a lot of wealth. Um, and uh, it's listed in uh, billions of US dollars purchasing parity. Um, and you can see probably Tokyo has more wealth um, than New York, um, but it's really not certain um, what the truth is um, in terms of the actual numbers for right now. Uh, so in terms of the uh, top 10, you got Tokyo is number one, uh, New York is number two, Los Angeles is number three, London is fourth, Paris is fifth, uh, Seoul is sixth, Chicago is seventh, uh, Osaka uh, is number eight, um, Shanghai is number nine, and uh, Rhine, Germany, and San Francisco is number 11. I'm just going to list them off. Uh, and you can see Washington, D.C., and Beijing, Dallas, Boston, Houston, Shenzhen, uh, Philadelphia, Toronto, Seattle, uh, Atlanta, Taipei, and so on. Um, and then a couple other Chinese cities, uh, Sydney, Australia, um, and so on. Um, now, there is an important distinction uh, in terms of GDP per capita. So that is not necessarily true. Um, in Tokyo, you know, there's basically the average person is making more money uh, in New York by quite a bit than in Tokyo. Um, so uh, it is important to look at the per capita rankings as well. You can see San Francisco is perhaps of these top ones here. San Francisco has uh, perhaps the highest uh, per per capita uh, GDP. So uh, it's important to, and so these numbers are really hard and debatable as well. Uh, so I looked up uh, for Tokyo just to see what the breakdown is. Um, you can see that quite a number of people are in information and communications, about 35% or so, 34%. Um, and then there's quite a lot also in uh, doing academic research, professional and technical services. Um, and then real estate is pretty high as well. Um, and you can look at all the others here, um, but then they have non-Tokyo as well. But it's just nice to see the actual numbers for Tokyo. Uh, so New York comes in as number two, um, maybe a close number two, but you can see uh, in terms of uh, top publicly traded companies, Verizon's very large, JP Morgan Chase, Citigroup, MetLife, Pfizer, New York Life, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. Um, and so on, American Express. So quite a number of financial companies uh, in New York, um, and basically that would be one reason why they would be so highly rated in terms of finance. Uh, so here's a summary for Los Angeles, the third wealthiest place to live on earth. Um, and basically you can see, uh, you know, there is a lot of film and movie and Hollywood stuff going on, um, but there's actually quite a number of other things. You can see um, basically the, some of the unemployment rates as well as uh, average salary, uh, average weekly wages uh, per person. Um, so you can see in here, um, basically, um, you know, it's basically education and health services, trade, transportation, um, but it doesn't really give you the the main dollar value of these, but just shows you where the employment is primarily. But you can see quite heavy on education here in Los Angeles. Uh, so after Los Angeles is London, um, and you can see here that there's quite a lot of finance going on, uh, insurance, legal, fund managers, and banking. In terms of office space, um, so it's just interesting to see uh, different measurements of how you can uh, think about wealth in the city, um, but basically how the offices are being used is one measurement. Uh, and you can see in Westminster, head offices, real estate, private banking, hedge funds, and government, uh, and then just more uh, fashion, art, and uh, other kinds of media being done in London. And then you have accounting and consultancy and local government, as well as banking, media, and legal. 
after London um, is Paris. Um, you can see Paris is quite a bit different, um, but it's basically the top company there is a petroleum refining company. Uh, and then you have uh, life insurance uh, and then a number of banks, uh, food and drug stores, energy again, utilities, uh, motor vehicles and parts, and then you have uh, food and drugs and more insurance. Uh, but basically this gives you some idea of what's going on in Paris. Well, let's take a careful look at what the cities actually look like. Um, so I was just gonna do Tokyo, Japan, uh, and show you what that looks like uh, and search for it here on Google Earth and basically get a view of what it's all looking like. So here we are heading into Tokyo. Uh, you can see quite a large uh, city. Um, and uh, interestingly, one of the things about Tokyo is it's kind of got a bay here. Um, so you can kind of see uh, it is kind of uh, Tokyo. This, this bay is pretty large, so it's not actually right out on the seafront. Um, so there's different areas, uh, but essentially this is Tokyo here um, and you can see they're quite large it goes quite into all these other areas as well um, and some mountains and the background and some other things um, but uh, it gives you some idea uh, so we'll just do a quick view of New York City here you can zoom in and I'll show you essentially where the New York City is you can see it's uh, kind of fast here but uh, you can see Manhattan Island here uh, Brooklyn uh, and then also New Jersey, so quite a lot of stuff and also kind of a water city. So the top two, uh, importantly enough, are uh, pretty close to the ocean um, and uh, rivers and things like that. Then here's Los Angeles. Uh, you can kind of see some of the areas, Santa Monica, Beverly Hills, uh, Pasadena, Long Beach, um, a very busy port, uh, and for instance, uh, and the rest of uh, suburban LA. Uh, London, I would say, is quite a bit different um, in terms of the top four now. Um, so it's basically part of a river system that heads out to the ocean, but it's certainly not right on the ocean front uh, like LA or, uh, you know, these other larger ones. Um, but uh, nevertheless, it is a pretty important city in terms of wealth. Uh, and you can see uh, basically how it works. But basically there's several different, there's uh, City of London, there's London proper, uh, there's this Canary Wharf. So there's quite a number of areas, uh, Westminster and some, uh, you know, basically both sides of the river as well. So, uh, but it does kind of um, change things because it's not right on the ocean front. Uh, so one interesting thing is Paris is quite a lot like London in terms of the river city. Um, you can see that the river is probably not quite as big, but a little more snaky uh, than uh, the uh, river in London. Um, but then again, it's also pretty far from the ocean front, uh, much further uh, than even London. You can see quite a bit ways out here. Uh, this river goes all the way out to here and drains in here. So quite a bit ways from the ocean uh, front, but nevertheless, a very wealthy city. Uh, so I'm going to switch this a little bit to do GDP per capita um, by city. So you can see Luxembourg is actually number one here, a uh, city in France, Geneva, uh, Monaco, San Jose, California, um, and uh, Linz, Austria, and uh, Basel, Switzerland, uh, Venice, Italy, um, and then a couple cities in Germany are pretty wealthy off per person and then Florence and Italy, so, and then San Francisco and some others, Washington DC, Seattle, and some others. But uh, we'll try to look at where these are located and some details about them in a second. Now, so if you're not familiar where the details about Luxembourg, it's also located here kind of deep within Europe. Um, it's kind of a strange place. I've always kind of wondered why it's so wealthy. We might do a little bit more studies on this um, just to see, but you can see as we zoom in here, um, that it is another river city, but it's really far from the ocean front. Um, and, uh, but it does have quite a lot of wealth here um, in Luxembourg. So I was personally surprised to find this guy, uh, Ames, France. Um, it's kind of a number two wealthiest in the world uh, per capita. Um, but it is kind of maybe looked at as an alternative to uh, working in Paris, I would say. Um, and it is a little bit closer to the ocean front as well, not too close, but uh, on this river front here, it looks like a quite large river. 
um, but it's actually kind of smaller when you get zoomed in here. Um, but uh, it is interesting little city, uh, kind of structured uh, with a lot of farmland on the outside of the town. Uh, now Geneva, Switzerland uh, is probably uh, famous because it's also got uh, this big lake here. Um, and it is looking pretty good uh, in terms of a nice and clean city and a uh, pretty nice place to live and uh, just being right on the waterfront there, which is great. Uh, Monaco is probably one of the first cities that I would say that I would be seriously interested in living in. Um, it's right on the Mediterranean. You can see uh, kind of its own little uh, area, but it's got quite a lot of different cool areas. Uh, you got a lot of boats here docking uh, right on the waterfront, um, but it's a very small place uh, in general and very exclusive, uh, but, uh, uh, but interesting, one of the wealthiest places on earth. Uh, this one kind of surprised me to see that San Jose, uh, in terms of per capita, was actually one of the wealthiest places on earth, um, in fact, it, just after Monaco. So uh, surprisingly, um, Monaco and then San Jose. So uh, the average person in San Jose is making quite a lot of money um, and uh, uh, just interesting to see uh, the difference. Uh, obviously Monaco would be a lot nicer to live in, uh, but San Jose has a lot of tech companies uh, and uh, various uh, technology infrastructure already located there. Um, so this really small city after San Jose um, is Linz, Austria. And uh, I was just really surprised to see this guy being so wealthy. I um, mean, kind of see it's another river city, um, but uh, certainly it's got quite a big port, actually. What the heck is this port doing here? Um, so some kind of a, perhaps a river port, maybe that even heads out to the ocean. That would be crazy if it did, um, which in fact it might, but... Um, <laughs> Maybe it's too far. That's way too far. Um, but it does have a port here um, of some sort. Um, and you can see a pretty interesting little city. Um, but it looks like most of the main downtown is kind of over in this area. Um, but kind of connected to the waterfront, actually, which is interesting. There's also this Basel, Switzerland, but we're going to go straight to Venice and show you Venice first. Uh, so here we are in Venice. Um, basically, it's got a little peninsula that heads out here, and then it's kind of all this little island area. Um, but pretty interesting little city. Um, certainly um, more on the interesting side of things. Um, one of the problems with this um, is that it's actually not very mountainous over here, which is great. Um, so there's no volcanoes and things like that for long-term times, but it is kind of nice to have some mountainous areas um, so I'm a little bit surprised that other places in Italy don't show up before Venice but apparently Venice is pretty wealthy um, and uh, good to know about and you can see uh, basically how Venice works I just want to take a careful look here at Venice to kind of see what else is going on but you kind of see there's some boat docking areas out in here a um, couple separate islands looks like a train train station that heads right into Venice um, and some other things but uh, kind of cool just to see how the city's laid out um, kind of relatively uh, relatively uh, complicated I guess to get from one side of this island to this island but looks like you can do it somehow um, there's maybe some little bridges and boats and some other things um, but uh, uh, certainly cool to see uh, the city up close uh, next in line are a number of German cities, believe it or not. Um, I'm really surprised because Germany doesn't have a whole lot of waterfront, um, and yet their cities are pretty wealthy. Um, so interesting to kind of make that observation. Here's another German city you can see, Nuremberg. I always knew that uh, Munich was a wealthy city. Uh, I just didn't realize that it was one of the top uh, in terms of per capita. So basically... Uh, the average person makes quite a lot of money here, um, which is quite interesting just to see um, Munich's design kind of has a river, it runs on the center of it. Heading out of Germany, we head into Florence here, Italy, kind of interesting, also another interesting kind of area you can see. 
Uh, kind of got a river running through it here. Um, and another uh, basically old style of housing. Uh, it is interesting to point out that San Francisco is one of the wealthiest cities in the world. Um, and you can see uh, here uh, on a map what it looks like. Um, but basically you can see there's a downtown Market Street here um, and then a number of really close to the waterfront um, and pretty interesting, uh, maybe not as interesting as Venice, um, but uh, and not as wealthy per person as Venice, um, but uh, certainly very wealthy. Um, you can see, I'll show you the wealth map again in a second. Uh, so here we are looking at all the wealth here. So we went through uh, Luxembourg, France. Um, whoa, what happened here? Uh, but yes, San Francisco um, and a number of these other cities. Um, holding it. Um, there's some problem here. Hold on a second. Okay, sorry about that. It uh, when I do my uh, stop playing and start playing, it uh, erases the the column for some reason. So, uh, but here you can see San Jose, uh, a number of these other cities here. Uh, we went through this uh, ones in Florence, San Francisco. We got Hartford and Washington D.C., Seattle, and a number of others uh, heading in here. Um, uh, so one interesting thing is that the GDP per capita map is not quite the same as the just raw GDP. So um, certainly in very different cities, there's a lot of smaller cities that show up. But if you look at the major ones, uh, it may be better to look at that. Uh, we can see Paris, uh, Seoul uh, showing up, which we haven't seen yet. So maybe I can look at Seoul really quick. Give me a second and I'll load that one up for you. I actually haven't been that impressed by Seoul, but it is a pretty wealthy place. Um, there's a lot of electronics here. Um, it is on the border almost with North Korea, but you can see kind of heads out to this swampy landish area. Um, not super great for boating, but it does have uh, access to the ocean front uh, through the river. Maybe a lot more like London, I would say. Uh, so surprisingly, in my opinion, Chicago shows up here as one of the wealthiest ones uh, just after Seoul uh, in Korea. Um, now, it does have a lot of waterfront here. Um, however, a lot of Chicago is actually back in the suburbs, as you can see. Uh, a lot of people in Tokyo probably feel the same way. They feel like you live miles and miles from the ocean or waterfront here. But, uh, but having access to Lake Michigan is great. Um, the downtown area is... Uh, quite large um, and it kind of extends along the uh, waterfront here so you can kind of see and as well as the south side as well but uh, it's a lot of straight roads pretty flat um, which is another reason why I don't really like flat places because I originally grew up in Chicago area uh, but it is pretty nice city downtown uh, so here's uh, just just slightly not as wealthy as Chicago is Osaka. Um, now I would say Osaka is quite a bit different. Uh, you can see quite a lot of little these weird little uh, man-made islands right along the coast front, um, but it does kind of resemble <laughs> to me. Uh, this, this, although this is ocean front, um, it does kind of resemble a little bit this bay, kind of this peninsula of Chicago, which I kind of noticed. Um, and then they have this major river that kind of heads back into Osaka, which is also interesting to see as well. Uh, so here's a look at Shanghai, China. Um, so it does have a lot of GDP. Uh, now again, this is not GDP per capita, but you can see this is kind of the Bund area and this little river kind of is very important here. Uh, actually kind of reminds me a little bit a cross between, geez, uh, London because it's so far inland, uh, but it is kind of swampy, I would say, maybe out in some of this land. Um, so it'd be interesting to see. You can't even really see the river unless you look at it carefully. Um, but it does got quite a downtown uh, and quite a metropolitan sprawl. So I would say that's kind of the sad part uh, about many of these cities is that there's not a lot of waterfront. And although the waterfront usually is the nice part, um, but Shanghai is interesting because it doesn't really have that part uh, being near the ocean front. Um, but you can see the water looks quite dirty. Um, in this area as well so I don't know maybe that's one of the reasons why Shanghai is located more inland uh, but uh, just an observation and just after Shanghai is Beijing incidentally 
Um, and you can see Beijing is quite far inland. Uh, it's kind of uh, located in this more in this Bay Area, but quite far from that. Um, not really an ocean front at all, um, but uh, quite wealthy uh, in terms of uh, overall cities in the world. Uh, so after Beijing is uh, Washington, D.C., surprisingly, uh, both capitals of the country. Uh, and interestingly, I would say Washington, D.C. was the first time I would say this kind of stuff, but uh, it looks a little more interesting just because it's got this major river. Uh, you can see heading out to the ocean front. Uh, and uh, the, this kind of makes it a little more interesting. Uh, Beijing doesn't really have that kind of a quality river. Um, but uh, interestingly, Washington, D.C. does have a lot of money associated with it. Um, so here we are looking at this. We're just at Washington, D.C. And then next is Dallas, Fort Worth, which we're going to just skip. Um, it's kind of more of an internal city. Uh, Boston would be really interesting to see, um, as well as Houston. Uh, we'll probably look at those as well. I'll try to look at Dallas. Give me one second here and look at these. Uh, so I'm sorry about this for Dallas, but yeah, I forgot. Dallas has these really nice lakes uh, surrounding it, uh, which make it kind of an interesting city um, because there are quite a number of lakes. Uh, so it kind of makes it a little more enjoyable uh, to live in. Uh, but you can see quite a, a sprawling area and actually not too many people are living by these lakes. Uh, so incidentally, they don't really enjoy the lakes that much. Um, so uh, that's one of the casualties of being an uh, inland city, but uh, interesting. And then I'll bring us over to Boston really quick here. And it's just loading up Boston. Um, so you can see Boston here. Um, and as you can see, there's quite a big harbor here, really nice area. I really love Boston a lot. Um, it's my family lives out on Cape Cod, uh, but uh, there's a really nice little harbor here. And it's got this MIT, Harvard, great downtown area, um, and just nice walkable city. Uh, so one surprising thing about Houston is that it is actually not as wealthy as Boston. Um, and that may be because of some educational factors and some other things. Um, but it's actually not as nice as Boston because it's just not right on the ocean front. Um, and there's maybe some more financial companies uh, in Boston, even though there are quite a number of oil companies uh, here in Houston. Uh, so I'm really glad I looked at this, this list carefully. So after Houston is Shenzhen. Now, Hong Kong is one of my favorite cities in the world. It's out over here, but Shenzhen is perhaps really interesting as well and quite a lot of wealth. And in fact, more wealth than uh, looks like Hong Kong, uh, at least in terms of metropolitan area. Um, so you can see that there's quite a lot of sprawl out in Shenzhen, uh, but uh, Hong Kong probably has a lot more waterfront, um, which is great. Um, but uh, for some reason, Shenzhen shows up ahead of Hong Kong. I don't know why they show, don't show Hong Kong on here, but there's a lot more room for factories, development, and other things. Uh, but it's certainly one of my more interesting cities to look at uh, in China. Uh, so after Shenzhen is Philadelphia. Um, and you can see it's not really located uh, right on the ocean front, but it does have access uh, to this major waterway. Um, it is kind of an interesting city. I would say um, certainly New York and uh, Philadelphia and New Jersey, they're all kind of in a line with each other and as well as Boston. Uh, but uh, it certainly it is an interesting place to uh, live and work. Uh, might be more interesting in some ways than Washington, D.C. just because it's got more waterfront here along the ocean. You can kind of see, well, it's not really oceanfront, but the river is quite major and significant. Um, but uh, interesting nonetheless uh, that it's one of the more wealthy areas in the world. Now, part of the Great Lakes is Toronto, um, and it comes just after Philadelphia. I was personally surprised about that. Um, one of the problems is that Toronto is just so straightforward. You can see a lot of the streets resemble like kind of Chicago style, um, right on the waterfront here. Um, and you know, Chicago is probably better positioned. It's just got more uh, more people involved. Uh, and Lake Michigan is maybe a little bit nicer uh, than the lake here. So uh, Seattle is one of my favorite cities in the world. Um, it just got so much different cool little waterways, really cool mountains and hills. Uh, just a great overall city. Um, but surprisingly, it's even smaller GDP per GDP than 
uh, Toronto and even uh, Philadelphia and all these other places. But um, but it has certainly got uh, some interesting uh, places uh, to live and work in Seattle. After Seattle is Atlanta, um, and now this is a global list of cities. So again, quite a number of cities in the United States. Uh, you can see Atlanta, it kind of doesn't really have any river or anything like that. It just gets uh, kind of, it's on the way to Florida. Um, and surprisingly, you know, it's one of the major places for economic uh um, so if you're not familiar with Taipei, uh, Taipei is a major uh, electronics area um, for just a lot of semiconductor companies. Um, and it's also one of the wealthiest places in all of Taiwan uh, and the world. Um, but it's surprisingly, it's just after Atlanta. So it gives you some perspective. If you've ever been to Atlanta, you can kind of get an idea for uh, wealth uh, in Taipei as well. But it uh, gives you some perspective. Um, this is a city I have not heard of in China, um, but it's perhaps very wealthy. Um, it's uh, about as wealthy as uh, Taipei, interestingly, and also Atlanta, um, but maybe per capita it's a little bit different. Um, but it looks quite interesting city. It's got, uh, I know there's quite a lot of pollution in this area, so that's one thing that really concerns me. This is kind of a uh, area where it collects a lot of pollution so but uh, but nonetheless it's a pretty wealthy area um, um, so this is an area I definitely should know about called Guangzhou near Shenzhen and also Hong Kong um, and also Macau over here um, but certainly more of the centerpiece uh, or this area this is the Pearl River that heads back into here uh, one of the most important rivers in China um, but uh, one of the wealthiest areas in China um, and personally kind of surprising that this is not quite as wealthy as the last city but uh, interestingly uh, that's what the numbers say so uh, so next is Sydney um, just you know surprisingly you know not as much wealth as Guangzhou but uh, one of my favorite cities in the world, um, really cool little harbor, a lot like San Francisco Bay, perhaps San Francisco Bay is a little bit nicer, a little bit bigger, but there's a lot of little nooks and crannies in here, meaning there's a lot of little housing areas um, that San Francisco Bay does not really support, um, but City Harbor does because there's just so much little river areas back in here and all that, so it gives a lot of waterfront, um, which is great, uh, but you can see Sydney here. Now the next is the island of Singapore, uh, also a really cool place, uh, very interesting for transportation, a uh, hub uh, for the earth, um, but you can also see here that the, the waterfront is kind of not so nice, not as nice as you may think. Um, it's mainly for shipping areas, you can see a lot of ships all docked in here, um, and but uh, kind of as a resting point uh, between uh, transportation because it's kind of got to get around this whole area you have to go through here and maybe just makes for a nice little stopping point um, but interesting little city uh, in terms of transportation uh, for the waterfront uh, next is Miami uh, Miami is really interesting uh, just because it's got these kind of uh, a lot of oceanfront property along uh, the islands here um, very wealthy areas um, and then as well as so it's got a pretty sizable downtown I would say not super big but you can see kind of some of the shape of the buildings pulling up here as they load up on the imagery um, but quite a lot of suburban sprawl uh, in Miami with just straight roads not super interesting you can see Miami International Airport there's also Fort Lauderdale and some other areas uh, that are interesting but quite a nice area just to drive into and out of um, a lot of little just islands and cool areas to check out um, so next is a city of Nagaya uh, in Japan. So you can see here was Tokyo up here, Osaka that we looked at, and uh, Nagaya. So quite a lot of wealth in Japan in general. Um, and you can see a lot of oceanfront and just really cool areas uh, to live in uh, because of the whole island has just got lots of great areas to live. So uh, pretty cool areas to live and work and a lot of wealth coming out of Japan. Uh, so here we are back in Hong Kong. So surprisingly, Hong Kong shows up uh, after all these other cities, uh, including Miami, but it's just such a fantastic place. Um, it's just really cool islands and stuff. But, you know, I could be wrong. Maybe the wealth, there's some problems there. Uh, it's not as wealthy as it may seem. Um, 
there is a lot of people a pressure uh, just from population uh, that make it you know there's some uh, pretty bad living conditions there that I've read about and seen pictures of um, but uh, but certainly a very interesting city um, in terms of wealth now so surprisingly just after Hong Kong is Moscow Russia um, now they do have a really nice river that runs through here it's not as big as you might think it reminds me a lot of Paris um, and uh, basically but very wealthy uh, city um, it, does have quite a lot of weird roads, I would say, um, but it's kind of a circular city, so it kind of has these uh, almost roads similar to uh, London, I would say. Um, but anyway, next up for Moscow is Milan. Um, a lot of this is starting to just be called big cities, not necessarily special places on earth to live, which kind of depresses me a little bit, so I might stop doing this research in a little bit, but you can see Milan. Um, one thing I am aware of about Milan is that these mountain ranges around it create a lot of pollution uh, for Milan here. Um, so it's not quite as enjoyable a place to live as you might imagine, even though there is, excuse me, some wealth in this city here. Um, Melbourne is actually one of the more interesting cities. Um, it's got, uh, particularly because of its location, it's very far south, um, located near Tasmania here, and you can see got quite a bay I'm, uh, right on the waterfront. But again, I'm quite surprised with the suburban sprawl here in Melbourne uh, as opposed to right up on the waterfront. Um, but that's maybe just a issue with how they urban design. Um, so surprisingly, Jakarta shows up here um, just after Melbourne. Um, and I'd say it is really different here in Jakarta. Uh, than Melbourne, and it's one of the most shocking differences, but yet the wealth is about the same uh, in terms of total wealth. Now, per capita is probably the main question here. So you have a lot of wealth in Jakarta, but you actually don't in terms of per capita. Um, so this is a really interesting city, uh, Shizou, because it's so close to Peking, or excuse me, uh, Shanghai, but it's kind of got this internal lake, um, kind of a cool little city uh, just to think about in terms of wealth. Um, one of the wealthiest cities in the world, um, and yet uh, kind of located prior, pretty close to uh, Shanghai. Uh, next, brings us back to California, is San Diego, California. Um, now, surprisingly, uh, not as wealthy as some of these other cities, um, but uh, interestingly, another California city. So I'm not a big fan of Madrid, uh, but here we are in Madrid just after San Diego. Uh, you can see quite a lot of people here, so maybe the per capita wealth may actually be less than San Diego, for instance. Uh, but interesting to see um, that uh, Madrid is one of the wealthiest places. Okay, so here we are in another uh, interesting city called Mumbai, uh, in India. Um, now, this is one of my more favorite cities um, just because it's got a lot of oceanfront. Uh, you can see that they have uh, some areas that this is the essentially the downtown of Mumbai is in this area. It's kind of the wealthier area. Uh, and then it gets a little bit poorer as you get, or well, a lot bit poorer actually, uh, as you leave the city. Um, but uh, interesting city nonetheless. Um, uh, so interestingly, after Mumbai is Phoenix. Um, I'm a little bit familiar with Phoenix because my grandmother lived there. Um, there's not a whole lot of industry in Phoenix now that I think about it. Um, so it really gives you a tight idea of the wealth uh, in Mumbai um, that kind of you know when you think consider the population too it kind of really kind of scares you a little bit uh, to think about how tight uh, relative wealth might be in Mumbai versus Phoenix um, but certainly there is a major airport here um, and uh, quite a lot of suburban sprawl uh, so next is Dhaka, Bangladesh, um, and I am a little bit familiar with this city. I've studied it uh, a little bit in detail, um, and there is quite, I have some friends also from Dhaka, um, but uh, basically uh, it's surprising that it is one of the more wealthy cities in the world. Uh, there's just so many people though in Dhaka, so it's just hard to comprehend the gap between people and uh, well, population and wealth. So now, uh, especially when you compare that to Phoenix, uh, and you say, well, you know, looking at the size of the area, but uh, you know, Phoenix might be just a small area uh, of this. 
Uh, but anyway, so it's really interesting to see Delhi here as well. So these are starting to become some of the most populated places in the world are also the most wealthiest in the world. So um, that is interesting uh, because they're not necessarily the most desir desirable places to live. Um, I am familiar with Delhi. The you know GDP per capita is about like it is in Mumbai, uh, but a little bit higher. So you can actually make more money living in Delhi than you can in in Mumbai per capita, uh, but Mumbai is probably far preferred to live in um, and just as a city in general. But you can see uh, Delhi is quite large, expansive city, uh, not very desirable to live in, pretty hot, um, and not even close to the mountains. Um, so very difficult, I would say, in general, uh, but wealthy. Uh, so here we are in Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, um, just about as wealthy as Delhi, India, um, which is pretty interesting. You can see the scale here is about 10 miles. Um, so we're not talking, um, when we go back to Delhi, um, Delhi, India, we can kind of probably better compare with Dhaka, Bangladesh. Um, but if I fly back to Dhaka, Bangladesh, and I do 10 miles, uh, you can kind of see the difference here. Um, so 10 miles is is about you know this distance here so this is quite a larger city and it also includes a lot of stuff down in here as well as here so this goes for on and on uh, just with people in here but um, but actually not anyway yeah it's a lot of people uh, so here we are in Detroit Michigan after Minneapolis st. Paul um, I would say this is a more desirable place to live in than Minneapolis st. Paul just because it's right on the waterfront here and you got the river um, and just Minneapolis I can't believe that it's wealthier but it is um, and maybe not isn't per capita but Detroit uh, is an interesting place to live and work in uh, so one of the biggest cities on the planet is Sao Paulo um, and I am familiar with Sao Paulo I've lived in Sao Paulo a little bit um, and you can see it is quite large um, and but uh, it's basically, you know, this is maybe 10 miles by 40 miles or something like that, or maybe 20 miles by 60 miles or something. But uh, but quite large city. Um, kind of frustrating because, again, Santos out here is probably probably nicer place to live in. Uh, and why people live in San Paulo is a whole huge question. So um, it's kind of one of these questions about why these cities are so big. Um, it would be really interesting to find out, but uh, anyway, it's just just a ginormous city. Next is Chengdu, China, uh, another part of this really major polluted area, um, but also wealthy. Um, so I wouldn't say this is maybe a little bit nicer because it's closer to the mountain front. Uh, so maybe the pollution does stay away because you're just at a higher altitude. Um, but still, pretty large city. Um, you can kind of see doesn't have any major river near it, um, but uh, even kind of hard to see on the satellite imagery, but uh, kind of a downtown area, you can say, maybe a small river running through here, you can see this little river right here, um, but relative to the size of the city, you can barely even see it. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Busan, Busan is one of the greatest cities in the world, in my opinion. Uh, it's here in South Korea. And it's certainly far preferred uh, to Seoul. Um, you can see that it's got a whole lot of islands, a lot like Hong Kong, actually. Um, and actually, maybe even more um, cooler than Hong Kong because it's got all these little mountains and driving ways in and out of the mountains and waterfront. But the waterfront quite isn't quite as good as maybe Hong Kong's. Uh, unfortunately, the beaches when I looked at Busan was really, there's like this beach right here. Um, and there's a really a rest of the beaches aren't really that swimmable um, but uh, you know it's interesting little area um, and certainly one of the wealthiest and cooler places to live in the world now uh, this is one of the crazier cities Bangkok I would say this resembles a lot like Chicago um, and surprisingly way poorer than Chicago but still one of the wealthiest cities in the world um, surprisingly you can see that it operates like Chicago in the sense of just a lot of suburbia way out to here um, and this goes maybe 10 20 30 40 50 i don't know maybe even 100 miles back into there but not a whole lot of waterfront unlike chicago for instance um but uh it does have this nice little river that runs through bangkok uh so next is mexico city um another really polluted area um 
not even close to the ocean front uh, just surprising to see but a huge city um, and one of the wealthiest places on earth next i'm going to show you istanbul a very cool city right on the waterfront got a lot of coastline here that's being developed and worked on um, kind of hard to get around to sometime i would say in some of this coast front um, but you can see the airport over here um, and then istanbul here and then the great waterway the getting through these two where the east meets the west uh, and uh, just super interesting fun city uh, to check out Uh, so some of the other cities you might want to check out on this list, we were down here about the 50th wealthiest city in the world. So we've gone through, believe it or not, 50 cities um, about, uh, but there's another couple of cool ones. Rio de Janeiro would be really cool to look at. Um, and then there's just uh, Tel Aviv, uh, a number of other oceanfront ones like Lima would be interesting, uh, and uh, Barcelona and so on. Um, and then St. Louis shows up on here, <laughs> and then Rome and then Kuwait City and so on. And then you start to get to Karachi and uh, some other ones, Bogota, Tampa, United States, Pittsburgh, and uh, Sacramento and some so on. Uh, but any, anyway, interesting to see. Um, take a look at this list. Uh, let me know if you have any ideas or suggestions. I'd be glad to talk to you about it.